Hello all, welcome back. This is Cristobal Dina from Trinity Software. Let's create a login form using Flask in this tutorial. In the previous Flask tutorial video, I have built a simple web application using Flask and MySQL. Now, let's add a login page to that application so that only the authorized user can view the registered student's details. So, this is the application which we have built already the flask mysql is the root directory we have this app.py and we have two html files under templates folder now first step is uh, we should add a template for the login page and also we have to add a route to handle request to the login url in this python file app.py first Let's check what is present in index.html. In index.html, we had these three buttons to see the student's registration details. Now, let us rename this index.html as home.html so that only logged in users can access this data. Rename this index.html as home.html. Now, for a login landing page, we shall create index.html in templates. So, new HTML file, index.html. We are going to create the login form here. So, title, okay, here we have a div, div tag. Within the div tag, let me give h1, Trinity software login, okay. Now, we shall have the form, action equal to. Action attribute of the form tag will specify where we should send the form data when the form is submitted. So we shall use URL underscore for here. So this URL underscore for function dynamically builds the URL for the specific function login. Let me give a function name here which we will write shortly in app.py. So login and method. Either you can use post or get. Obviously we should be using post because if you are using post method, the form values will not be visible in the address bar of the browser. Okay. So within the form, now let's create a label for username, then text input for the username. Similarly, label and input tag for password and finally a submit button. So label, label username, input type to text is equal to username id equal to username and it's a required one similarly we'll do the same for password then finally we'll have the submit button input type is equal to submit and we'll make the value as login okay so now we have to add a route to handle request to the login url in app.py okay so we'll move on to app.py at app.root url for login and i'm going to pass methods here we have to specify the applicable http methods that is get and post for the root as an argument in the root decorator so I'm just going to give methods equal to get and post. The purpose of this is that the end users can send a post request with their login credentials. Okay. DEF login function. So this function performs a test to see if the login credentials are correct. If they are correct, then the user is redirected to root home. And if the credentials are incorrect, an error message occurs. So let me have a variable with empty string to store the error message. Now let's see about a request object. So this request object contains all the data that is sent from the client to the server. So we are going to make use of two attributes of request object, method attribute as well as form attribute. Method attribute is the current request method. Whether get or post. 
and form attribute is the dictionary object which contains the key value pair of form parameters and their values so first let me check the condition if request dot method equal to post so it means if the login credentials has been posted we are using form attribute to retrieve values of the form parameters so let me get username from the form using request dot form of username okay the corresponding value of username will be retrieved in this username variable similarly password can be obtained using request dot form of password now we have to check these credentials with our mysql database so make sure your exam server is running while executing this program and i have used trinity registration database user table which contains the authorized users details like username their password first name last name and email id okay now i am going to verify this by using cursor dot execute method select table name user where the username equal to percentage yes and password equal to percentage yes here it dynamically passing the username and password which are retrieved from the form okay we have executed the query so we can fetch one record and return the result using cursor dot fetch one method i am fetching that single row and storing it in record record equal to cursor dot fetch one okay and if record exist we have to create a session data in this case session is actually the duration for which the user logs into the server and logs out the time duration when the user is logged into the server okay the session data is a dictionary object that contains key value pair of the session variables and their associated values so now we can set the session variable to a specific value on the server syntax for setting a session variable is session of you can give a variable name in this case i am using logged in and i am setting it to true since the user is logged in here setting it as true similarly i am setting another session variable namely username session of username equal to the username which we have retrieved from the record right so the username is stored in record of 1 that will be obtained in record of 1 fine we have set the session variables now you can redirect to the home page okay using this method return redirect url underscore for of home so we will be writing the app root for home soon okay else if the record doesn't exist it means that the username or the password is incorrect in that case we are setting an error message as incorrect username or password try again okay so in case if it is not redirected to home page we have to show the login form again with the message that is incorrect username or password so index.html should be rendered right so return render underscore template we pass index.html and to pass the message also okay now let's see what are to be imported here we have to import this request session redirect and url underscore for so we shall import all this request session redirect and url underscore for and the session data is actually signed by the server cryptographically so it means we have to set the secret key for session set the secret key as app dot secret underscore key equal to super get secret key now next the root for login i have just mentioned redirect url for home right so we should add a root for home at 
app dot root of home. So let me write a function for home. We already have a HTML file under template called home. So we're just going to return render underscore template home dot HTML and we are going to pass the username the user who has logged in currently so that username is equal to session data so session of username okay now let's check the output python app dot py want to listen so we got the tenant is offer login here let me give the username and the corresponding password which you have stored in the mysql database i am giving the correct password here username and password so as we can see here the page is redirected to the home page okay so here this is what we have already uh, done right python registration java registration so we have done with the login part now we have to write the code for logout right so let me add a root for logout at app dot root logout I write the function for logout what we are supposed to do in the logout you have to remove the session data this will log the user out right in order to do that we have a method called session dot pop session dot pop it takes two arguments so the first argument is the session variable so session variable is here i have used login right so logged in and the second argument is none we have one more session variable username here so we will use session dot pop username comma none so after the particular user has logged out so it should be redirected to the login page right so we'll use a return method here return redirect of url underscore for login so now in this home page we should have a link to logout right so we are going to add a url for logout in this page home.html div tag here then the div tag with the hash2 tag i'm just going to welcome the user and the corresponding username is mentioned here. Uh, this is what we have done in home.html. Username is equal to session of username. Which user has been logged in. That username will be stored in this username variable. So welcome of username. And I will use the a tag. A href to give the link. URL underscore for logout that's it check the output the line number line number 26 okay i didn't close this up. okay so now we got this welcome christopher Cristobal is a username that is passed and we have the link for logout function. So once logout is pressed, it is redirected to login page itself. Now we can add CSS to this and for the registration page also, you can add a logout function, right? So I will do that now. I'm just going to create a separate folder here called static. Static under the static will be having the new file. I'll just place all the CSS here style.css. Okay, and I'm just going to add the logo also here. So I'll place the logo. So I've placed Trinity logo here. Now I will just have the CSS file here. So these are the contents of style.css. So the final structure of our uh, Flask app, Flask MySQL, it contains two folders. Static contains CSS files and the images required for our application and templates contain the HTML files and one app.py. So let's check the output. 
So after including the CSS, I use the name and password. So let me give a wrong password now. So if I give the wrong password, you will get the error message. Incorrect username or password. Try again. So again, logged in. So we have got this home page. From here, we can go to the home page or we can log out from this page. You can log out from this home page. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, kindly share and subscribe.